Welcome to Gale Ord's Mothballs. No. Gut wrenching mud fight. No. Gary Kemp's Mysterious. No. Gossip Mongers. Yes. Gossip Mongers. Yes. Yes. That's it. Not Gossip Mongers. Welcome. Get your gossip gargles on. Get your gossip gargles on. Gossip number one. This is from Anonymous. Hello, team. I have a story about my mum. <laughs> <laughs> First single night out. Oh. One night she left the local with a guy called Nobby, <laughs> the local football coach. <laughs> she was pissed. He was pissed. (laughs) Just some mutual pissed upness. Mm -hmm. And he offered to walk her home from the pub. She politely accepted the offer. She hadn't had much action after the divorce had cleared. (laughs) Oh, God. Is this his mum? Oh, Jesus Christ. (laughs) Don't write to us about your (laughs) mum. She she invited him in for coffee. (laughs) Just a friendly coffee. (laughs) She went to get that said coffee and came back. To her surprise, Nobby was stark, bollock naked, (laughs) spread on the sofa. My mum panicked, then took a breath and checked it out. To, in her words, see if it was worth breaking her back, snapping at it. (laughs) I like his mum. To her her words. That's what she said. Yeah. (laughs) It wasn't. And she told him... She told him that. <laughs> it's not worth snapping my back. <laughs> he left and that was it. <laughs> Nobby lives next door. <laughs> it was awkward. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> worth snapping her back for. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. (laughs) Can I walk you home to the house next to mine? (laughs) And I'm going to take a massive punt. (laughs) Take all my clothes off. (laughs) What's the worst that could happen? It's not like Uh. we live next door. Gossip number two. Okay. Uh, Okay, this is from Morgan. Um, As a child, I had a friend named Timmy Wicks. (laughs) <laughs> you lucky bugger as, as you'll no doubt agree Timmy Wicks sounds like a name of a fucking liar And he was The lies of Timmy were uncounted But they ranged from having a shark in his pond <laughs> <laughs> The lies of Timmy Wicks <laughs> Volume 1 It starts with that Where's it go? Um, shark in his pond <laughs> Shark <laughs> Uh, To him witnessing a pigeon eat a whole tree. (laughs) (laughs) God. Uh, (laughs) Bloody Noel Fielding, isn't it? (laughs) 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 Timmy Wicks. Uh, Wicks. in In the long, hazy days of summer holidays, Timmy and I were digging a hole when a helicopter (laughs) flew low over us and towards Timmy's house. The following day, he told me that it crash-landed in his back garden and he was fixing it. (laughs) (laughs) Sorting it out. Uh, uh, Timmy Wicks. (laughs) (laughs) Hope it didn't land in the shark pond. (laughs) (laughs) We began to make... Uh, we began to make plans for where to fly in our newly gained <laughs> helicopter. <laughs> oh, this poor lad. <laughs> Timmy Wicks. Uh, as I'm sure you'll remember of the summer of 97, mm. uh, saw, the, saw the release of Jurassic Park, The Lost World. And with all the images of us riding T-Rexes in our head, we drew a map to the island. <laughs> uh, yeah. Focus, mm. Timmy. <laughs> We had it all. The chopper, the map, the ambition. (laughs) I remember sleeping that night filled with bubbling anticipation over my new dino pals and our plan to barbecue the shit ones. (laughs) Yeah, you would, wouldn't you? Um, I was sadly let down by Tim 
as later that week he angered the local witch when he tried to throw his scuba extreme action man on top of a cloud and it had instead <laughs> smashed her window. <laughs> Okay. What is happening? <laughs> he thought he could throw his action man onto a cloud. <laughs> <laughs> smash an old lady's Did window. He? Oh, dear. <laughs> but instead he hit an old woman's house. Yeah, and smashed, oh, smashed Timmy it. Wicks. Yeah. He told me that she'd put a curse on him that made our piss a deadly corrosive acid. <laughs> God, <laughs> this is a roller coaster. No. Naturally, naturally, we put our dinosaur safari plan on hold to seek vengeance by slashing great arcs of yellow acid piss over her car. <laughs> Smashed a window and pissed on a car. Great. Um, we had made a powerful enemy that day, and she took the thing I wanted the most. Timmy. <laughs> Dinosaurs. <laughs> Timmy told me the following day that the witch had shrunk our helicopter to the size of a raisin, and it was lost. <laughs> Uh, what a bitch. <laughs> what a bitch. Oh. Unable to fly, we later attempted to take further revenge on the witch by blowing up her house with dynamite, a smartest tube filled with sand. Unfortunately, at the age of eight, we lacked the means to light the fuse. From Morgan. Oh, he got it's out lovely. Of the, he got it's out of that lovely. line well, didn't he? It's lovely. He, he obviously <laughs> told that line, was that, how the fuck am I going to get out of this? I could uh, say she shrunk it. Shrunk it to the size of a raisin as well, <laughs> and it got lost. <laughs> yeah, uh, oh, I like that one. Yeah, it's I loved sweet. it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Timmy Wicks. Uh, Timmy Wicks. Oh dear, super what a liar. Oh, lovely Timmy <laughs> Wicks. Gossip number three. This is from Anonymous. Hello, gossip mongers. Please, please keep this anonymous, as I'm pretty sure it's true. I don't want the lad to know who's alerting the general public. (laughs) (laughs) So I live in a crap town in Derbyshire, (laughs) (laughs) which was affectionately labelled Crack Town UK (laughs) by the independent newspaper (laughs) in 2005. (laughs) It's so rubbish that the third most popular attraction on TripAdvisor is the hole in the wall, which is literally a hole (laughs) in a wall. (laughs) Anyway, back in the summer of 2010, one of our mates, let's call him Filipino Phil, (laughs) decided to escape our hellhole town by working the summer season in Marbella, which he did for half the summer and then abruptly returned home without explanation. (laughs) This is where the gossip begins. In Marbella, Filipino Phil got himself a job DJing in a small but swanky bar owned by a slimy Brazilian guy. Let's call him Nigel. Nigel had a huge villa in Marbella with a massive swimming pool. Always wore Armani shirts and drove a Ferrari. He's what most of us would refer to as a wanker. (laughs) Nigel's wife was a drop-dead gorgeous Russian who Filipino Phil said is the most beautiful woman (laughs) he's ever seen. (laughs) Despite being a millionaire, Nigel was very hands-on, working every day in the bar with his missus. As well as DJing, Filipino Phil would also help out serving drinks and mopping the floor. (laughs) (laughs) What a cool. (laughs) Cool I love stuff. (laughs) And working so closely with them each day for half the summer, Filipino Phil became very close with the couple. (laughs) Anyway, one Tuesday night after a really quiet evening, Nigel closed the bar early and invited Filipino Phil (laughs) back to his enormous villa. The drinks turned out to be absinthe, and after a few, Nigel turned the conversation to his Russian beauty. (laughs) What do you think of the missus, said Nigel. Yeah, Yeah, she's great, says Filipino Phil. (laughs) No, I mean, what do you really think of her? (laughs) What do you mean, says Filipino Phil. Do you think she's hot, says (laughs) Nigel. Of course, she's red hot. (laughs) Hotter than a bloody vindaloo, mate. You're a lucky man. Would you like to shag her? Asked Nigel. Filipino Phil hesitates. What do you mean? 
Simple question. <laughs> Would you like to shag her? <laughs> well, it's out of the question. She's your wife. <laughs> yes, but what I'm saying is you could if you wanted to. <laughs> what do you mean? You can shag my beautiful wife. <laughs> <laughs> on one condition. Oh, hello. What condition? You can shag my wife if first I can bum you. <laughs> so simple. What a simple rule. <laughs> what a quandary as well. <laughs> Okay. Ooh, should I, shouldn't I, should I? <laughs> just, just do now, it, yeah. a lot of people think that Filipino Phil is a bit gay, but apparently he'd never been bummed before. So this was a bit of a quandary. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> On the one hand, he could make love to the most beautiful creature he'd ever laid eyes on. A stone cold 10 out of 10. And on the other hand, he'd have to take one up the shitter. <laughs> In the end, the temptation of the Russian beauty was too hard to resist. <laughs> no, so he agreed to let no, the greasy no, Nigel loose no. on his tight little body hole. <laughs> no. 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 Jabbing away. Oh, come on. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> rumour has it that the ordeal was so traumatising oh, that he also shat himself whilst being bummed, that Filipi Filipino <laughs> Phil immediately collected up his vinyl records <laughs> and got on the next plane home. <laughs> I don't know if any of that's true, but my mate Desperate Dan swears it's the truth and he never lies. The saddest part of the whole story is that he never actually got to shag the Russian beauty. Never mind. All the best. <laughs> All the best. Fucking <laughs> hell. Gossip number four. Uh, it's from Phil. Hello, Poppy, David and Joe. Thanks for the podcast. When I was 37, I went to toilet. Basically, <laughs> just the once. Basically, I did a poo. <laughs> Nothing extraordinary there. That nearly made Just me your run of the mill dump. <laughs> <laughs> I wiped my bum and then flushed the poo and toilet run away. Easy peasy. <laughs> Done it loads of times. <laughs> <laughs> About five minutes later, I left the house, walked to my car with my cricket bag slung over my shoulder, threw my bag in the boot, got in the car and drove a about nine miles to the cricket club. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking detail. <laughs> Once there, I got out of the car, got my kit out of the boot and walked to the pavilion, saying, hello, hi, how are you doing, to all my teammates and their wives and families who'd come to watch the match. I walked straight into the change room on my own and threw my kit on the floor. As I sat down, I got changed. I noticed a long trail of toilet roll by the side of me, snaking out into the middle of the floor, covered in streaks of flesh and damp feces. Flesh? Flesh. Oh, sorry, flesh. fresh. <laughs> Jesus. Sorry. Flesh. <laughs> yeah, his arsehole had collapsed. <laughs> sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, covered in streaks of fresh, damp feces. <laughs> streaks of flesh. I wish it was flesh. Uh, Confused by what I was looking at, my eyes worked their way up the dirty toilet roll to find out exactly where it's coming from. <laughs> Naturally, it was coming from my arsehole. <laughs> Natch. <laughs> I had somehow managed to do a shit of my own. <laughs> Wipe my anus, <laughs> leave the house, drive nine miles to cricket, walk past all my teammates and their wives and families. <laughs> whilst having a four foot length of used toilet roll sticking out of my connected anus it was like it was like a dirty animal's tail and as I say I was 37 <laughs> 
dear. I really like that one. I love how that started. What did you say? I'm, went to toilet. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm 37. Went 30, to toilet. When I was 37, <laughs> I went to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Gossip number five. Anonymous. Now, this piece of gossip is 100% true and accurate, as I was lucky enough to witness what happened. A teacher had joined my secondary school. I say teacher, but he was pretty much one of those people who walked around at lunchtime being the real teacher's bitch boy but still had the power to be a dickhead, something in which he seemed to thrive upon. The pupils at my school referred to the said teacher as Bombhead, a name given to somebody who consumes a lot of MDMA, as this is what he called himself on social media. <laughs> oh, God. And something in which, oh, if you shouted idiot. at him, would land you with an hour's detention. <laughs> this, however, is not the gossip, but background. What we found online was much, much worse. <laughs> the event happened at 4.30 after school when word, and got, word had gotten round that Bombhead was on a porn video. Rumours like these normally get thrown around school about teachers but always seem to be rumours, so I didn't think much of it. Word quickly got about that this was indeed Bombhead. And not only just a porn video... <laughs> but a live one. The way this particular website works is that people make porn videos, but the viewers must pay to watch them live. In order to gain viewers, the performers must make a 10-minute live preview <laughs> as to why you should pay for this video and not others. I'd gone on the link. There in all his glory is Bombhead, <laughs> spread out on a bed, bollock naked holding his erect penis he wasn't just performing he was talking in order to get paid viewers <laughs> this peaked when as a teacher he said live to an audience made up of 1200 pupils <laughs> from school oh my God. if you watched my last video you'll remember I came in my own mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you'll remember, you'll recall. I don't remember that. I caught it. <laughs> he then said, I can see we have a lot of viewers tonight. <laughs> Which added to the humour, as they were all pupils. <laughs> That's horrible. That's fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's I'm laughing. very popular. Yeah. <laughs> He's getting really confident. I bet you're not a load of 14-year-olds oh, on a bicycle. Now, as I mentioned, Bombhead was the dickhead of all do dickheads. Now, if he was all right like the rest of the teachers, maybe it would have been kept quiet, but not for Bombhead. He was grassed up to the headmaster by a pupil, and not just your usual grass, but a sort of Jack the Lad that Bombhead had hated. <laughs> it then turned out that Bombhead was on a work placement to become a primary school teacher. And th this was the last day before he completed it. <laughs> so <laughs> Shit. What an error. Just Terrible wait a error week. to make. Just wait a week. <laughs> he was asked to leave the premises immediately and his dream job of becoming a teacher had been shattered. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray! Oh, God! Uh, Someone's life is ruined. <laughs> <laughs> and we're that. laughing at it. <laughs> <laughs> he, he. His, his life is probably spiralled. <laughs> <laughs> God. Oh, God. I love the thought of the crowd watching him. Oh, like, that, he that's all thinks... the best bit. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I see a lot of people are watching. <laughs> <laughs> so popular. Getting Start more and flexing, more adventurous. Yeah. Oh, someone wants to see me flick my own cum in my mouth. God, that's horrible. God. <laughs> that's good as well. I remember last week. <laughs> I <laughs> I came in my own mouth. <laughs> See you Monday, boys. <laughs> Gossip number six. 
This is from Wayne. Hello, Wayne. Hi, Joe, David and Poppy. In 2000, it was 2014, and I was contracted to build an extension on a large house in Reading. I had all the tradesmen lined up except the bricklayers, so I put out some feelers and found these two old local brickies, Bob the Drink and Mickey the Tits. They were friendly and a bit too chatty for my liking, <laughs> but they laid a nice brick. After about a week, <laughs> they had half the cavity walling up when I joined them on the scaffolding for an update on progress. We were a day behind schedule, so I thought I'd jump on the trowel and give them a hand for a bit. We got chatting about some of the previous sites they'd worked on when they told me the strangest story a bricky has ever told me about someone called Billy the Nosh. During the recession of the early 90s, there wasn't much building work going on, so wages for builders were low. Bob and Mick had managed to blag a few weeks' work on a site near Newbury. After a week or so on site, they noticed that every now and again, one or two of the brickies would frequently disappear for five minutes. At first, they assumed they were off for a piss, but it became so frequent that every bloke on site would have to have a dicky bladder or something. So next time one of them came back, Mick says to him, What's the crack then? Where is everyone disappearing to? This one bricky says... Pop up the tea hut and find out for yourself. <laughs> All right, I'm in. <laughs> so Mick decides to investigate and has a walk up there. On the way, he sees the site manager walking towards him. As they pass, he gives Mick a wink. <laughs> Mick is keen to get to the bottom of this, so he goes up the steps and into the tea hut. As he steps inside, the light's off, and in the dark corner, he sees one of the site labourers sitting in the corner wearing a little black, black dress. <laughs> oh, fuck <laughs> off. Oh. Fuck off. <laughs> a little black dress? Yeah. Like evening wear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before Mickey the Tits has time to ask what's going on, the labourer, a soft-skinned, <laughs> pale lad, says, put your tenner in my lunchbox and choose your wig. <laughs> oh my god Fuck me, what an opener <laughs> On the wall is hanging three ladies' wigs Blonde, brunette and redhead <laughs> Mick is still flummoxed As to how this is going to pan out So he chooses the blonde <laughs> like he just he goes does, for it. He does it. He doesn't you leave. Don't have to, mate. No. Do you go? Oh, this isn't for me. I'm married. The labourer dons the wig and kneels down in front of Mick and starts undoing his belt. What? Well, oh. Yeah. Okay. yeah where, do you, where do you think it was coming? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, dance lessons. <laughs> Mick's about to clip him round the ear when the labourer looks up. And Mick realised he looks absolutely fucking gorgeous in the wig. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Charlene from Neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> she was fit, actually. Exactly yeah. like that. <laughs> Except it's a young fella. <laughs> <laughs> in a tea hut. <laughs> a tea hut in Newbury. <laughs> Do you know what? You're gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> I thought he was skinned as well. Fucking oh <laughs> 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 tea out in Newbury. How romantic. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> God. How did you two meet? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why this is happening. Why is, it, why is the labour doing this? Because <laughs> money's tight, I guess. Oh, yeah, it's a recession. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The early 90s. They all did some crazy stuff <laughs> five years ago. It's fair, dude. <laughs> oh, God. It turns out that Billy the Labourer, or Billy the Nosh, <laughs> as he became known, was badly paid <laughs> on the work-to-rule contract. <laughs> so he had to make Zero his wages up by sucking off old blue bricklayers. <laughs> <laughs> No, he didn't. <laughs> That's the only way he can make pub. money. Work in a pub. <laughs> oh, anything. God. Go back to college. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Billy's taking the shortcut. 
Oh, God, Mickey the tits. Oh, apparently by the end of the build, Billy was turning up to work in a brand new Toyota Corolla. It made 17 grand. <laughs> Everyone else lost their house. Oh, God, in case you're wondering, Mickey the tits was called that because he had a medical condition that enlarged his breast tissue. So he had massive man boobs. <laughs> Don't give a shit about tits. <laughs> Mickey the oh, tits. Oh, God. Weird. Oh, God, My right? Weird. In. Gossip number seven. Celebrity. Sean. Walsh. Uh, hello, all. Um, if that's how you begin these things. Um, the, the, the gossip that I heard, I, well, I, it was actually told to me firsthand. My, my friend uh, at secondary school, Danny, told us that uh, he, was, he, was, he was once walking down the street and he was singing a song out loud... Um, as you do, from The Lion King. Now, I can't remember which song from The Lion King, Akuna Matata or the, or the other ones, whatever. Um, and a producer were, was walking past Daddy uh, at the time and, and heard Daddy sing this song and thought Daddy was so good that he offered Danny a role in the next Disney movie. Now, I don't know what time this... this uh, what period this would have been, so I don't know if that film, that might have been Pocahontas, or, uh, I don't even know, Hercules, I'm not sure, but, um, there you go. Gossip number eight. Hi, Poppy, Joe and David. This is a story I heard from my friend in an undisclosed northern location. A couple were having an argument over a subject unknown and the gentleman decided to storm out of his girlfriend's house to go to the pub. I know what you're thinking, this seems like shit gossip, but hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Said gentleman spent a few hours in the pub drinking with friends and I imagine having a good old-fashioned blokey rant. The pub closes and he decides to get a kebab and outside said kebab shop bumps into a rather large and greedy seagull. Oh. Okay. That's it. That's <laughs> 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 I was itching down, I'm done, I'm out. I'm fucking cold as <laughs> In a moment of enlightenment, said gentleman decides to ditch his kebab and make a grab for the said seagull, holding it captive under his coat. He then walks the ten minutes back to his girlfriend's house where he proceeds to knock on her door until she answers, half asleep, in her rotty pyjamas. <laughs> like any true gentleman, at this point he chooses to throw the terrified and aggressive seagull at his beloved and make a run for it. <laughs> The story ends with her hiding under the stairs and a police call out. <laughs> I like to think she didn't press charges. The RSPB got involved. <laughs> Doubt that'll make it in, but I hope it made you laugh. It did make it. Well, I think it did make yeah, it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you scraped it. it. Yeah. Joe Poppy and David will now choose their favourite room. Right, so the best five are, for us to choose the best one for Poppy to uh, spread out, mm -hmm. is Bummed for a Russian Beauty. Oh, fuck, I remember that one. Yeah. Oh. Oh, <laughs> throwing a seagull in your ex's hallway. Uh, yes, yeah. uh, Bombhead. Bombhead, oh, yeah. fucking hell. <laughs> Three <Thanks>. wigs, not. <laughs> <laughs> Billy and the Nosh. I'm 37. <laughs> oh, I really don't know. Actually. Okay, I like I, these ones. I, yeah. do, I think I've got, I'm between two. Mm. <sighs> okay, yeah, I've got mine. Oh, you got yeah. yours? Yeah. David? Yeah. Okay, so after three, shout yeah. out your favourite. One, two, three. Bummer. Bum rushing beauty. <gasps> what? I feel Billy the Nosh. Bummer. Oh, God, they three different ones. Yeah. What the fuck do we do? 
I think we choose our second favourite. Well, oh. my my second favourite was Three Wigs, which yeah. was what I chose. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say that was mine as so well. There you go. Yeah. So okay. Billy the Nosh. Billy the Nosh. Three Wigs. Pick, okay. pick a wig. Right, open the window, Poppy. Okay. Ah. Um. Good um. Good um. <laughs> good good healthy um. Is he falling asleep? <laughs> I think so. You climbing out the window? <laughs> Sunbathing out on, on the... Here we go, uh, Billy the, the Nosh. Um, Big Billy the Nosh. Uh, it was a builder's... He found, found a great, some great bricklayers. Uh, <laughs> Forgot about that weird bit of detail. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the guys goes upstairs. Oh, no, the, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't cost a lot. No. What doesn't cost a lot? A lot. <laughs> Yeah. Sentences. Let's are get initiated. to that tea hut, yeah? <laughs> yeah, let's get the three <laughs> wigs on the little pretty boy. <laughs> right. they're, in a, they're in a tea hut. One of them goes to the tea hut. He walks in. No, I know, I know. Okay, you don't get paid a lot for bricklaying. They do all right. <laughs> one of them, someone walks into a tea hut. There's a guy in there. There's three wigs on the wall. Blonde, brunette. Redhead. He says, "Pick a wig." <laughs> guy puts a wig on. The the guy gets on his hands and knees, gives him a blowjob. How much for? Fifty p. Fucking hell! That's a tenner, wasn't it? How do you end up with a Toyota Corolla? Fifty p. Fifty p. Fifty p. Fifty p for a nosh. Yeah, up. That's it. let's say it's fifty p. Fifty p for a nosh. It was ten pounds, yeah. as everyone remembers. See you later, guys. Oh, that's <laughs> short. <laughs> Couldn't be asked for that one, could you? You in a rush? <laughs> was there any more? No. You, you off really. to a party? Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye. Oh, oh Sorry, that, was that was fun, no, wasn't I'm, it? I let us all down with my window. Yeah, no, come on, no, did yeah, you? no, yeah, you did, you did, uh, you did a bit. No, oh, shush, hey, come on, you should be ashamed mm. yourself. I know, fine. I am. Um, well, thank you very much for sending in your. Uh, I'm being really professional. <laughs> yeah, why? Thank you very you? much for sending in your rumours. You've been um, great. Without audience. you, in nothing. Yeah, genuinely. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, that it was, was fun. fun. What, are you doing? Yeah. what are you doing now? I'll get my trousers off. Oh. Are you? Yeah. I might take mine off as well, <laughs> okay. Joe. I'm going to take my trousers off at about ten. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. See you later. Bye, Get your see you later. Bye. 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 Bye.